Hi, my name is Alex and I'm an SI leader for VCH 4024. In this video, I will be going over the chymotrypsin mechanism. Although this mechanism may seem tricky at first, it's actually relatively simple and can be broken down into two phases, each phase containing four different steps. But before we get into the mechanism, you need to understand what chymotrypsin does. Chymotrypsin is a digestive enzyme which acts in the duodenum of the small intestine. In the small intestine, it helps break down proteins through a process known as proteolysis. Recall from your notes that if you want to form a peptide bond, it requires the removal of water through a dehydration reaction. So if you want to form, a, to break a peptide bond, you have to add water through a hydrolysis reaction. So chymotrypsin performs proteolysis, or the cleavage of proteins, through hydrolysis. So chymotrypsin doesn't just cleave at any peptide bond. It cleaves at a very specific peptide bond. It cleaves at the C-terminal of any aromatic group. Recall from your notes that the aromatic groups are tyrosine, tryptophan, and phenylalanine. So if you were given a generic polypeptide like the one behind me, you would know that chymotrypsin would cleave at the C-terminal of that aromatic group. So now that we know the function of chymotrypsin, we're going to look at the actual mechanism. So let me orient you to the model that I've drawn behind me. So as you can see, they've labeled all the parts of the, of the enzyme. So this is all the active site. Here, right here at the bottom, you have the catalytic triad, which include aspartate, histidine, and serine. These amino acids are going to be doing the majority of the heavy lifting in this reaction. Also, you have the hydrophobic pocket, and this is where the Aromatic residue is going to rest while this reaction is taking place. Then you have the oxyanine hold, which include glycine and serine. But we'll get to what um, the oxyanine hold does in a little bit. On the side, I've written which phase we're in and all the steps in the phase. So as we go along into this mechanism, I'm going to check off each step. And if you're reviewing this video, you can see which phase we're in. So I'll, when I go to phase two, you can see that. So without further ado, we're just going to start with the mechanism. So the first step of the mechanism is the positioning step. And that's just putting the polypeptide chain into the active set of the enzyme, which you've already done. You can see the purple, the polypeptide chain's already in there. And putting the aromatic residue into the hydrophobic pocket. So we can go ahead and check that off. The second step of this reaction is histidine acting as a general base. Before you see how histidine acts as a general base, you need to understand how histidine and aspartate interact. So if you look at the aspartate, you notice that it has two oxygens. And if you remember from chemistry, oxygen is highly electronegative. So it's going to have a partial negative charge on that aspartate. And if you look at the histidine, nitrogen is more electronegative than hydrogen. So that's going to create a partial positive charge on that hydrogen. So the interaction between the negative uh, partial charge on the aspartate and the positive partial, partial charge on the histidine is going to form electrostatic interaction. So this electrostatic interaction is actually going to help histidine be a better base. So histidine, what it bases do is take, um, they accept protons and it's going to accept the proton from the serine which is right next to it. So histidine is going to donate its electrons so that it can form a bond with that hydrogen. So now it has the hydrogen and is active as the general base. So the third step is the nucleophilic attack. So what the, nu the nucleophile in this reaction is going to be serine. So if you look at serine now as opposed to it before, you can see that it has gained electrons. It's in its alkoxide form. And if you remember, alkoxides are a lot better nucleophiles than alcohols. So now this alkoxide form is going to, going to act as a nucleophile and nucleophilically attack the carbonyl group on the polypeptide chain. So this is going to break this pi bond and donate it up. So that completes the nucleophilic attack.
Now I'm just going to redraw the bond lines really quickly. So now you can see there is a tetrahedral intermediate that's, that's here, which is going to be stabilized by your oxyanion hole. So the hydrogens of the glycine and the serine are working to stabilize this very unstable intermediate. But like all unstable intermediates, it's eventually going to collapse. So the electrons from this oxygen are going to collapse and reform the pi bond. So now the, the problem is, is to find which of the bonds you're going to break. So in this case, this bond is going to break. And it needs to attack something. So it's going to attack the hydrogen of this histidine. And in this case, histidine is acting as a general acid because it's going to be donating its hydrogen. So now, just to clear it up, you can see that the pi bond has been reformed, this bond has been cleaved, the C-terminal product now has the hydrogen, and now you have formed your first product of this reaction which is a C-terminal product. And so this product is going to float away in solution. And now we're going to ready for phase two. So now we're going to go over phase two of the chymotrypsin mechanism. So I've listed it here. And notice that the steps are very similar to the steps that were in phase one. The only difference now is that you're going to have an N-terminal product as opposed to a C-terminal product. So as you can see in the model, the C-terminal product has dissociated into solution, and so now you have what is left, which is the N-terminal product. So you're going to work to get rid of that now. Um, so the first step of this reaction is going to be the positioning step again. And remember that this reaction is a hydrolysis reaction. So this is where water is going to be introduced. So the positioning step is putting water into the reaction, which I've drawn here. So that step is checked. Now the second step is histidine acting as a general base again. But this time, histidine is not going to take a proton away from the serine, because the serine doesn't have a proton anymore. That proton was donated into the c terminal product. So now instead, histidine is going to take a proton away from the water. It's going to donate its electrons and so that it can form a bond with that hydrogen. And so now you've formed a hydroxyl group. And so this time, the hydroxyl group is going to do the nucleophilic attack. So this is going to attack the carbonyl group again and kick up and break that pi bond and kick the electrons up. So now we've formed a bond here between this hydroxyl group and the carbon and broken that bond so that there are six electrons up there. So again this is the unstable tetrahedral intermediate which is going to be stabilized by the oxyanion hole. But remember, like the last time, this unstable intermediate is going to collapse and reform that pi bond. So here it's going to donate back in. So now the problem is, is you have to remove one of the bonds again. So this time, the bond that's going to break is the bond between the serine and the polypeptide chain. So this bond is actually going to go, and the electrons are going to take this hydrogen away from the histidine. So again, histidine is going to be acting as the general acid here. Now I'm just going to redraw everything so you can see it a little more clearly. So this bond has been broken. Serine again has hold of that hydrogen. And now this pi bond has been reformed. So as you can see, the N-terminal product has formed, which is this right here. And now serine has been put back into its original alcohol form. So that now you have the N-terminal product and serine has been regenerated. So now this is the end of the chymotrypsin mechanism. 
Now we're going to go into some of the most popular test questions that you may see on your exam. So now that we've gone over the chymotrypsin mechanism, here are some key points that you should have gotten away from the video. These are questions that could be asked on an exam. And if you're able to answer all of them without looking at your notes, you should be in good shape. So if you have any further questions about the chymotrypsin mechanism, feel free to ask any of your, your SI leader or a walk-in tutor. All the answers to these questions will be posted um, in the link below. Good luck on your exam! The Teaching Center, UF's Learning Resource Center.